so we'll move on to the next question which is how to get a plus for subject killers such as chemistry biology physics and tips and there's also one more how to score in science stream subjects and in tips um so i'll answer those two questions together Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel and today's video is just going to be part 2 of the Q&A that I've filmed. This is part 2 of 2 and if you haven't watched part 1 yet, you can do so by clicking the link down below in the description box that will take you to part 1 where I answer more study tips questions. But basically, I asked you guys on Instagram whether you have any questions to ask me on studying and a lot of you guys sent in a bunch of questions and I'm just going to answer those questions today. And the first question that I have here is which one you prefer the most, studying late night or early in the morning? And my answer is to study early in the morning. I mean, if you know me, you will know that I go to bed at 10.30pm every single day if I have school the following day and I just never stay up late when it's during the exam season or whatever. I just go to bed at 10 30 pm consistency is the key and i love studying early in the morning because it feels like there's so much time and i can be very productive in the morning and i'm just the type of person who can't stay up late ever because if i stay up late if i don't get my sleep then the following day i'll just be in a bad mood and i can't focus in class i can't do anything so studying late at night or early in the morning, my answer is definitely early in the morning. I feel so good and productive if I start studying in the morning. Okay, and next question, tips for memorizing. Okay, so I have a video where I talk about how to memorize anything easily. You can go ahead and watch that video if you haven't already. I'll leave the link in the description box below. I talked all about memorizing by using acronyms and by using images to strengthen your memory talked all about that in that video. So there are a lot of memory tools that could help us. There are images and there are acronyms and it really depends on how you study and how you try to associate those things and put it under the long-term memory so you can remember them. But essentially in the end, I think what plays a really important role in memorizing stuff is just repetition. Because the human brain unfortunately has limited capabilities to remember everything. But with repetition, it could really, really help. So, so if you want to memorize something, then just repeat it again and again, and eventually you'll get it. So repetition is obviously important in order to study and in order to put those things into your long-term memory. Repetition is key, but there are also some things that could make your life easier with acronyms and with mnemonics, with pictures. And by just putting in a little extra effort when you're studying, could help. If you are interested to know how to memorize anything easily, I'll leave a link to that video. Um, I talked all about memorizing in that video. And so we'll move on to the next question, which is how to get A plus for subject killers such as chemistry, biology, physics, and tips. And there's also one more how to score in science stream subjects and in tips. Um, so I'll answer those two questions together. Scoring in science stream subjects is different for each science subject. We have chemistry, biology, and physics. And so I'll just start with chemistry. And I think that the key to doing well in chemistry is definitely the first few months in school, actually. The first few months at the beginning itself, there are some important concepts that are being taught to you. Um, on the topics of mole, number of mole, and the mass, and all those little calculations that you do, make sure that you really understand those because you are going to be using that again and again when you're in Form 4 and Form 5 as well. And chemistry is all about understanding. And if you don't understand from the beginning itself, then you're going to suffer towards the end. So make sure that when something is being taught to you, you follow closely and understand something before you proceed to the following chapter because everything is like interrelated in chemistry you really need to understand from the beginning itself so for physics calculation is really important it plays a huge part and how i make sure that i can ace physics is just by doing more exercises on calculation i spend a little bit of time 
going through and reading physics from textbooks and reference books and doing example questions and I just spend really little amount of time revising physics when compared to biology and sejarah but mainly how I prepare myself for physics exams is by doing a lot of practice questions a lot of exercise books that I get from bookstores I just do those and that should be sufficient because essentially it's just all about calculations Finally, for biology, I think a lot of questions that people would have when it comes to biology is do I understand it or do I memorize it? And the answer is simply to understand and then memorize and then apply. So, so a lot of processes are the core of biology. It's just all about learning processes. For biology, what you want to do is to get a set of notes that you can absolutely trust. The textbook is definitely not enough. Um, you have to get a reference book or some kind of notes that you can absolutely trust and I know some people say like try to study from multiple sources but for me I like to rely on one source only when I can trust that that source is complete and reliable because I think that if I refer to two or three books when I'm studying that just wastes my time so if I know that okay this set of notes is complete I can totally rely on it then I would just study from that and you have to find that set of notes that you can completely rely on and just study from there by using various kinds of study tools there are so many ways to study biology you can use mind maps redrawing diagrams could help as well and also by using flashcards whatever you like to use so study biology the way you want to study it there are so many ways to do it but obviously the first step is just to understand what is going on first before you memorize a process, make sure that you understand it and when you understand something, it will be so much easier to put it into your long-term memory. So that is the way to score for biology. And lastly, for admets. So admets is a subject that you either do really well in or you fail. There is often no in-between. And for admets, I think that in the beginning, we would definitely be intimidated because it is so new and it is also quite different from the modern maths that we are so used to doing in Form 3. And ad maths is just something different, but to do well in ad maths, definitely try to get the concept right from the beginning itself. And to do well in ad maths, you need to put in a lot of effort and you need to be really patient as well. So the first few topics in ad maths are actually not that difficult. I think the first topic was on functions and that is not very difficult compared to all the other topics that you'll be dealing with, but at that time, Maybe because it's new, so maybe you don't know what is going on. And if you're watching this, if you're in Form 4 and you're like confused about functions, the first chapter itself, then I ask you to go, go get help, do a lot of questions and just get it right. Because there's really no better time to clarify your doubts than right now. Don't let all those questions stack up. Because at the end of the year, you'll just find that, oh my gosh, I don't even understand chapter 1. How am I going to do the question paper? So, and the NMATS topics which a lot of people struggle with are logarithm and also differentiation. And I don't like differentiation as much as logarithm. I remember when I first learned logarithm in class, I was like, what the heck is this? It was confusing and I just didn't really know what was going on. So what I did was I immediately went back, took out my NMATS reference book and understand logarithm from there. I sat down and gave myself the time that I needed to actually understand what logarithm is and in the end when I understood it, it's really not that difficult. So when we don't understand something, we often think that it is very very difficult but once we get the hang of it, it is actually really simple and logarithm is one of the topics which might intimidate you when you first come across it, when you're first exposed to it and you don't know what the hell that is, it might intimidate you but Trust me, when you try and understand it, give yourself some time to sit down and just go through it, you will find that it is actually simple. If you want some extra help for logarithm, I do have four videos just teaching logarithm. And if you want to watch that, I'll also leave the links in the description box below. So yeah, when it comes to ad maths, you need patience, you need time, and you need hard work. These three are enough to do well in admits and just make sure that you don't lag behind. Once something is taught to you, understand it so that you do not regret at the end of the year or when it's nearing SPM time. Okay, next question.
Do you have a special technique for staying awake when you study sejarah? That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.